Kidlington, England is not a particularly notable place. It's got 13,723 people, 7 pubs, and 1 Domino's Pizza that, according to reviewer Keep Smiling 2014, has quote, shocking service and cold food. It's a place so unnotable that about 40% of the Creative Commons pictures I could find of it are all from the same local 5K. But in 2016, Kidlington became a tourist hotspot. Groups of Chinese tourists began descending on the village, taking pictures of all the exciting sights. Sights like random people's houses, nondescript gardens, and whatever this is. They actually ignore the village's only notable piece of architecture, this 13th century church, instead opting to jump on residents' trampolines and ask if they could mow their lawns. And it wasn't just a one-off. Week after week, the tourists kept coming taking selfies in front of unremarkable two-bedroom houses like they were Cinderella's castle. And nobody, least of all the people of Kidlington, could figure out why. Quickly, a number of theories developed. One claimed that Kidlington had been falsely advertised as a location of Four Privet Drive, the canonical home of the beloved character Vernon Dursley. Another claimed it was because Kidlington was featured in an episode of the TV show Inspector Morse. After all, nothing drives Chinese tourism quite like British detective shows from 1987. The BBC attempted to get to the bottom of things by handing a survey to tourists, but the tourists' only explanation was that they were there to experience, quote, the true sense of this country. Residents began discussing the matter at length on the Facebook page Spotted Kidlington, which I tried to look at for research, but it turns out has been taken down and the fascists who run the new page refused to let me join. Now, at this point of the video, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I know exactly why these Chinese tourists showed up in Kidlington, and I'm going to tell you. The bad news is that first I'm going to put that reason in context by explaining the phenomenon of Chinese tourism. Sorry folks, we've got to teach you something, otherwise we lose our educational nonprofit status and I have to start paying taxes. Now, if you've ever been to a major city or listened to your racist grandparent go on a rant, you probably know that Chinese tourism has exploded in the last few decades. Before 1995, tourism was functionally illegal for Chinese citizens who weren't permitted to leave the country apart from a few narrow exceptions. But around the mid-90s, the whole communist countries preventing their citizens from going places thing started to look like it may not be the surefire political masterstroke everyone thought, so China introduced its Approved Destination Status program, allowing citizens to take guided group trips to government-approved countries because nothing says freedom quite like chaperone field trips with government permission slips. This relaxed travel policy and the emergence of the Chinese middle class has turned China into the biggest tourism spender in the world. In 2019, the last pre-pandemic year, Chinese tourists spent $260 billion abroad, nearly double the next highest country, the United States. And destinations across the world have had to adapt to their new customers. In Las Vegas, for example, nearly every premier hotel now has a Chinese restaurant, has begun putting kettles into hotel rooms for tea drinkers, and placing slippers at room entrances so guests can take their shoes off immediately. Hotels around the world have even begun taking mirrors down and rearranging beds away from the door so that the rooms align better with feng shui principles. At Bister Village, the biggest outlet mall in England, which now generates 40% of its revenue from Chinese tourists, you'll find a Chinese-style noodle stand in the village center, Chinese New Year's sales, and a pret-a-manger with Mandarin menus to provide Chinese tourists with an authentic taste of fake French food. Bister Village, by the way, just happens to be 8 miles from, you guessed it, Kidlington. And I know what you're thinking, wow, nice job, Sam. You managed to tie the end of the educational section into the beginning of the answer to the Kidlington mystery. But the truth is, while its proximity to Bister Village is part of the explanation behind the Kidlington tourism mystery, the bigger reason has to do with this place. Blenheim Palace, the birthplace of Winston Churchill, and the answer to the question, should there be a wealth tax? It turns out that Chinese tour companies were charging $68 for an optional Chinese language tour of Blenheim Palace. The trouble was, the tourists who hadn't paid for the tour, who were dropped off nearby, had figured out that they could just walk to the palace and buy their own tickets for $25, thus saving $43 while providing equal opportunity to hear how Winston Churchill overcame his humble beginnings of being born in a quarter billion dollar castle. And so, Chinese tour companies needed a place to stash the tourists who hadn't paid for the tour of Blenheim. A place far enough away that they couldn't just walk to Blenheim, but still nearby enough that they could easily drop them off on the way to the palace, and then pick them up on the way to Bister Village. A place they could sell to tourists as an authentic slice of English life. A place like Kidlington. Okay, so if you just watched this video and thought, hey, that video was just a bunch of stock footage, even I could do that, then I have some news for you. You probably could. Making educational YouTube videos is easier than ever, and that's thanks in big part to our sponsor, Storyblocks. I've used Storyblocks ever since I got started on YouTube, and they have saved me immeasurable amounts of time and money. Most stock footage sites charge hundreds of dollars for individual clips, but Storyblocks charges far less than that for an unlimited subscription to a massive catalog of footage. And when I say massive, I mean massive. Need footage of a guy falling off a ladder? Done. 
Exploding champagne bottle? Easy. A man dancing with a pineapple? Yes, they have that for some reason. And it's not just stock footage. They also have music, sound effects, photos, after effects, and premiere templates, basically every asset you need in your video creating toolkit. If you do anything creative online, I can't recommend Storyblocks enough. Just click the button on screen or head over to storyblocks.com slash HII to sign up, and you'll be supporting HII while you're at it.